Faithful, there is no one so holy, no one but our God, our great, magnificent, Amen. wonderful God. Amen. Amen. And it's just sitting here reflecting upon the words of the song. Amen. That he is faithful, he is holy. Amen. And when we think about it, we really come to the same conclusion. There is no one so faithful as he and, and we're just grateful unto the Lord tonight for not only just his faithfulness unto us, uh, but just how he is a God that is a God of integrity. And we as people are seeking to be the same uh, uh, with the same characteristics to walk in that level of integrity and in holiness and righteousness and all those things that come directly from his deity and from his person. Amen. Amen. I greet each and every one of you tonight in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know that some people will be joining us here on Facebook. Some uh, have already. And we're just welcoming you here tonight uh, to the God in Light Prayer Line Ministries uh, Bible Study uh, and Prayer Line. Amen. And we're here to glorify the name of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we thank Sister Gloria for presiding, uh, Elder Marshall for opening us up in prayer tonight, uh, Prophet is Wanda for leading us in worship through song tonight. Amen. And then we're going to go right into the word. And we also are thanking God for the Bannerman family uh, for creating this particular platform for those that are new to the broadcast or to, new to the prayer line. Uh, they are the visionaries and we are here uh, because of them, by the vision that God has given unto them. And we're here to enjoy the Lord together uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, from whom all blessings flow. Uh, tonight, we're going to uh, take a different focus and a different shift in the word. Uh, earlier uh, this morning, the Lord woke me up and dropped this particular uh, passage in my scripture, uh, scripture in my heart. And we're going to be talking about uh, that on tonight. So let us pray and then we'll go right into the word of the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, from you, God, we receive life and in your word is life. And in life that is in your word, we are taught how to live, how to act, how to carry ourselves and how to please you. And God, as we go into your word, we want to learn those things that help us to align with your character and with your desire for our lives, God. God, there are times that you call us to a word that speaks to the core of sometimes where we are or even as a preventative measure to, to cause us to see and to understand what it is that you would have us to say. And God, we, your people, are open up always to hear what you have to say. Now, open up our spirits, our hearts, and our minds. And God, we pray where the word comes, Lord God, we will accept it, we will embrace it, we will live by it, and we will honor you with all of our hearts, our souls, and our minds. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. I thank the Lord for ushering and bringing you into the new year. 2018 brings along with it new opportunities, new challenges, uh, a new uh, uh, aspirations, and also us discovering uh, different aspects of God and also about our own selves. Amen. And allowing God to deal with us where we are in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, tonight, I want to call your attention to Psalms, the uh, 15th chapter. And I'm going to read one verse there. And, and those of you that know that's a very short chapter, uh, it starts off with the verse that who can abide in, in the tabernacle of the Lord. Uh, but verse 15, Three is the one that we're going to focus on tonight. And verse three reads, He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, neighbor nor take up, up a reproach against his neighbor. Again, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, 
nor take up a reproach against his neighbor. Those of you that had been on the prayer line carrying over from last year into this year, we have been in a series entitled Uncommon Allegiance and Valor, where we've been talking about the life of David and seeing how God was blessing him to ascend ultimately uh, to the throne of Israel. And David knows a lot about backbiting, people that backbite or backbit him with their tongues, with their words, uh, uh, to misalign his character, his person, tr trying to destroy him and actually uh, removing him from the potential for fulfilling uh, the will of God for his life. But tonight we're going to delve, delve deeper into the word or into the spirit of backbiting. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor take up a reproach against his neighbor. So if we go to dictionary.com, everybody knows I love to start with a working uh, definition of words, especially when it ties so heavily and deeply into the topic that we're about to discuss this evening. So when we look at the word uh, gossipers or gossiping or backbiting, it's pretty much synonymous and the definitions are pretty much the same. So when you look at the word gossiping, it's an idle or idle talk or rumors, especially about the personal or private affairs of others. It's light, it's familiar talking, or it could be in written form. And we know today in the day's world, the world of social media, a lot of things are posted ironically, as we're on Facebook tonight, uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, uh, different chat sites, uh, and uh, through text messaging, emails, or other forms of written uh, uh, communications. We know that rumors and gossip can, can be spread. We know that certain uh, newspapers are, are designed for the purpose of spreading gossip or mistruths or things about people's lives that others are curious to know. But we know at the same time that the spirit of a gossiper or gossiping is wrong or the person to tattling or idle talk. We, we know that it's a hearsay. It could be uh, considered to be news mongering. And some of us love the TV show Scandal. We can become quite scandalous with some of the things that we spread. Being a backbiter or a gossiper is one who damages the reputation of others. They're malicious, mean-spirited, and habitually obsessive. They have an obsession with spreading rumors about people. These are persons who are addicted to lies, spreading rumors, discrediting others. They, their words ruin lives and they destroy folks' character. Some people with the spirit of gossip have a spirit of, I can't help it. I can't help it due to the emptiness of their own lives. So therefore, the fulfillment of their lives is to talk about others and to spread information about others. They are, are persons that are unfulfilled. And they have no self-respect or self-esteem. So we're dealing with the core issues of people's hearts, their innermost being, the way that they think, the way that their heart function, and even the spirit under which they operate. When someone is operating by spirit of gossiping, we know that they're not led by the spirit of God but they're led by the spirit of the Antichrist between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, which we should be doing. So this person is unfulfilled. They have no self-respect or self-esteem. They don't feel fulfilled unless they're talking about someone else. They feel empowered by their own sense of self-worth when it comes to gossiping that they're emboldened to spread mistruths or secrets of others' lives as if they themselves were absolutely flawless in their pursuit of life. 
they don't see that they have some wrongs themselves that others could be talking about them. But a gossiper oftentimes either don't care or they are overly concerned about people spreading rumors about them. But yet, they're the ones that spread rumors about others with no concern for other people's feelings, their emotion, or the damage that they're causing. They're totally oblivious to their own shortcomings that if they were to talk or walk up to them if their own problems and issues or to walk up to them and slap them in the face, they'll miss it altogether. They miss the mark due to their own insatiable desire to continuously run their mouths about things that they've not vetted, things that they've overheard, things they're knowledgeable of, and oftentimes things that they're not knowledgeable of. They grab a piece of a story they don't hear the full deal or the full package of the story, and they run with only a piece of what they have. They can't hold water. These are the folks that you don't want to share your business. You don't want to share the secrets of your heart. You don't want to share your desires. You don't want to share your hurts. You don't want to share your pains. You don't want to share anything with them that you don't want anyone else to know. As soon as it leaves out of your mouth into their ears, you can consider it told. And maybe not factually, but some form of what you shared with them will be told. And these are people who like to lead by the word of a hyperball. That's adding more details to the story to juice it up, whether it's factual or not. They can't hold water. They, they, their adrenaline pumps at a rapid pace to share the next bit of juicy gossip to the point that rest, sleep, food, etc. eludes them. It escapes them until their diuretic, making up a word there, mouths have oozed its cargo of tails to tell all that has been told to them, and they unload their cargo into unsuspecting victims and their souls. Listen, you are not a garbage can. You are not a cesspool. You are not a dump. You are not a place where people can come and load garbage into your spirit. The more garbage that goes into our spirit by the spirit of gossiping hinders what the Lord Jesus Christ can seed into our spirit. And I don't know about you, I don't want nothing else other than the spirit of the living God and the words of the Lord seeding his words into my life. He said that his words have our life and our life eternal. The words of a gossiper are death, their destruction, their turn us down, and they bring venom into our lives. Last night I was watching a, a, a series of, of, of videos where they were talking about some of the most dangerous animals in the world. One of the animals that they showed was a, was a highly venomous snake, and I forget the name of this particular snake, but when this snake bites you, it's almost a guaranteed of, more, of, of being killed or to die. In other words, this venom is so powerful that it begins to cause the skin, it eats the skin, and it sends a, a, vict a, 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 a harsh co cocktail of venom through the person's body that begins to shut down many internal organs and cripples the skeletal, the muscles, and the circulatory system and causes the mind and the brain to shut down. Listen, gossip does the same thing to its unsuspecting victims. The only way to actually avoid that is to tell a gossiper, I want absolutely nothing to do with the stories that you're telling. Because in your stories, it's death. 
There's no life there. You're not looking to, to, to share the information so that we could pray for someone. No, you're just trying to turn them down and you're trying to fill your motivational piece. And that is to gossip about others. And I will not allow you to speak those words into my spirit anymore. Proverbs, the 25th chapter. And the 23rd verse says this, The north wind drive away rain, rain, so doth an angry continence a bite backbiting tongue. Let me say it again. So doth an angry continence a backbiting tongue. The north wind drive away wind, rain. We're praying in many cases for the latter rain and the former rain and for God to rain on us. I don't want our reign to be repelled because of what an angry backbiter has said out of their tongue into our spirit. No, I want the rain to fall into everyone's lives. I know that naturally, many times we don't like it when the rain comes. And some of us love the natural rain when it comes. Because when the natural rain comes, it cleanses the atmosphere. It causes things to grow and come forth. It causes a harvest to come forth. And it provides much needed drinking water. And we know that our bodies are made up of, of water predominantly. So we need that in order to live. The words of a backbiter are not words to live by, but the rain that should come is what we should live by. 2 Corinthians 12 and 20 says, For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I should find, found, be found unto you such as you would not. Lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strikes, backbiting, whispering, swelling, tumults. The apostle Paul was saying when he came, what he really was looking to find was those deeds of righteousness. People that were exalting the Lord, exalting and encouraging one another. They were repelling the spirit of backbiting. They were not walking in wrath, envyings, debates, strife, all of those things are things that lay the foundation for bitterness, for anger, for discord, for sedition, for heresies, and the likes. All of those things are the deeds and the works of the flesh. All of these things, if you listen to them, all of them are oratory. Some of those things are spoken out. Some of those things are written out. He's talking about our level of communication for the believer. The believer should be speaking for life as Jesus Christ spoke life. We shouldn't be speaking death into situations. We should be speaking life. A friend of mine has, has, a, has a parent that's always talking about their sicknesses and diseases which they don't have. Why will we speak death when God is commanding us to speak life? Why would I speak death about my brother or my sister through backbiting and hinder their lives when I should be praying for them that the blessings of the Lord not only overtake them, but the blessings of the Lord continues with them all the days of their natural born lives and that the blessing will be an inheritance to their seed and their seed's seed and their seed seeds after them for generations to come. When we learn to speak blessings, we can rebuke the curses from coming or even controlling or continuing in a person's life. When we begin to gossip and continuing in gossip and open our ears to hear gossip and wanting to hear gossip continuously, we're inviting the spirit that impedes, that hinders, and destroy the lives of others. Listen, Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verse 1 says this, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. God is telling us that thou shalt not raise a false report. There is absolutely 100% no reason for a believer to lie. 
say that again. There is absolutely, 100%, absolutely no reason to lie. But many times, even those of us who are preachers, get caught up in stating mistruths. Sometimes we get caught up in the moment. Sometimes we purposely do it. But we have to learn not to deceive. This is talking about bringing a false report for someone who is actually on trial for something or being accused of something that we knowingly know that they have not done. How many of us, by the spirit of a whisperer, a backbiter, those who are trying to malign us have actually spoken false things about us and we found ourselves in the midst of contention, struggling to actually be vindicated and we're waiting for God to vindicate us and oftentimes we attempt to vindicate us. But listen, if you have told the truth and you're in the midst of the viciousness of a gossiper, here are some key instructions for you. The first thing, don't try to vindicate yourself. Don't try to seek vengeance. The Bible says this very clearly, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Therefore, the better approach is to pray. The better approach is to seek the Lord and praying that God will bring the truth forward. Listen, it took me many years to come to that conclusion that I don't have to vindicate myself. I've learned that the more that I've attempted to try to clear my name, the worse the situation got, and the longer I stayed in it. When I learned to the secret of praying and not speaking forth, and asking God to bring forth justice and to vindicate my name, I found that his ways work out much faster than any of the ways and methods that I have employed. Yes, it's a natural thing and inclination to do that. It's a natural human thing to actually defend oneself. But you don't have to fight. You don't have to raise your voice. All you have to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And when the Lord gives you occasion to speak, he will place the words in your mouth thoroughly, completely. And when you have been, when you have finished speaking, the Lord will have already started the course of your vindication. Thou shalt not raise a false report against someone. And even when we know that someone has done something wrong, even when the truth hurts, we should speak the truth, regardless of who will be for us afterwards or who's against us. It's better to speak the truth and be on the Lord's side and to stay with him. James 1 and 26 says, if any among you seem to be religious, yeah, we're dealing with us with the religious spirit. We know some people have that holier than thou attitude. They can do no wrong. They're just as righteous, if not more righteous than God. Some of you know some of those people. I know some of those people. Some of us have been that person, and some of us are still that person, but yet we are never holier than the Lord. If any man among you seem to be religious, religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Listen to what James, the 27th verse says in that same chapter, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their afflictions and to keep himself unspotted from this world. Unspottedness alludes to every sin that there is, and especially the spirit of gossiping. In other words, if one claims to be a religious person, a devout person, a saved person, filled with the Holy Ghost, in servitude unto the Lord God Almighty, 
and have a deep commitment to him, then they should avoid gossiping at all costs. We should view gossiping not only as the venom of that snake, but we should view it as a cancer that is in the body of Christ and is it's, it's rampant among believers. We have got to cut this cancer off. James 4 and 11 says this, Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law of God or the law, which they're talking about the law of God. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Isn't that deep and powerful that we have become judges of the law when we begin to gossip or speak evil of our brothers or our sisters? That should really sink into our minds that we are judging the word of the Lord and in essence, we are condemning the word of the Lord. We have become judge, jury, and executioner of the word whom we love. And if we were to take it deeper, we're persecuting Jesus Christ. The Bible said that we are putting him to an open shame. We are embarrassing him all over again. Leviticus 19, 16, and 17 says this, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer amongst the people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Now, Let's talk about that for a moment. Verse 17, the first part of that. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. This year, we're going to deal with some real deal issues. How many of us, rhetorical question, hate our brothers and our sisters in the body of Christ? Come on, let's just be real. We know there are some brothers and sisters that stepped on our toes. They've gotten on our last nerve. Every time you go to church, they go, they have something to say and they say it negatively. Some of us don't even like the way they shout. We don't even care for the way they, dr they dress, comb their hair. We talk about them all the time. We sit there and make fun of them all the time. And for no reason at all, other than the enemy has sown seeds of discord, we just hate them furiously with an intensity. It's time for deliverance. It's time to be set free. It's time to be honest with ourselves. It's time to leave our gifts at the altar and go to our brothers and sisters and be reconciled because we want to move forward. This is the whole point of these teachings is that we want to progress in the Lord. Many years ago, I had actually said something about someone and then there was something that things that had transpired and for years that thing bothered me. And one day, lo and behold, I was out at Walmart. Yup, Walmart, the budget center of the world. Not a plug for Walmart, not an advertisement. As I heard a comedian say, I'm not being paid by them. But I walk into Walmart and here's this person who I have offended and they have offended me. I see the person, they see me, and they immediately begin to avoid me. So I go and make my purchases. And I'm praying the whole time, God, I got to get this off my chest. I got to get this out my spirit. So lo and behold, I go to pay for my items and I check out first. And I'm on my way out the door and I see out the corner of my eye, this person in the checkout line, the next in line to pay for their items. So I stay there. Waiting. The person saw me and I saw them looking around to figure out how can I avoid this man and get out of this store. Let me find the next exit. But unfortunately, or not unfortunately, that person was parked on the same side that they had to come past me. So we ended up connected. We had a very good conversation. 
I apologized to that person. That person apologized to me and we hugged. And after that, we went our own separate ways. But God will always provide an opportunity for us to be made free, to be made whole, to be made complete. We just have to learn how to take up the opportunity or advantage of the opportunity that is afforded us. I can no longer hate, you can no longer afford to hate, and we can no longer afford to take this further into 2018. We've already declared that this is a year that we're going to have to pray more f f ferociously. Even I heard someone talking before we even begun tonight about this is a year to pray because there's many things that we will see in the weather. And there are many things that we are going to see. I know that last week I said something about a big tree that I saw being shaken. And Sister Terry stated that was the family. I believe that that is part of it. But I also believe that there's more to that tree being shaken than just the family. I concur with Sister Terry. So, but at the same time, there's other things that are going to happen. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, and thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer amongst the people. We have to realize where we have gone up and down various people, cliques, or our groups, and we have shared things that we really should have avoided saying. God is calling his people to repent of the things that they set out of their mouths. Proverbs 18, 10 and 18 and 19. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. And some of us have lied to others and ourselves. No, I don't hate that person. I love everybody. Knowing on the inside that your countenance and your eyes and your speech has betrayed you. The words coming out sound one way, but we can hear the hidden communication. I don't want to disclose how I really feel. I don't want anybody to know where I really am in my thinking. I don't want anybody to know that I'm living in the cesspool and how I view this particular person. I don't even want God to know it. But listen, he knows it. He knows everything. So why not just come clean before him? God, yes, I do. I hate this person. And he says, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. We never want to be perceived as being foolish. In Proverbs 10 and 19, in the multitudes of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that reframeth his lips is wise. Yes, you may think the thing. You may feel the thing. But you're not going to speak out of your mouth that thing which is inappropriate. And if there is anger and hatred, you're asking God to help deliver me and set me free. Proverbs 11, 12, and 13. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A tale-bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. There are things that people have told me in confidence that will never be disclosed. I even had a boss tell me that a few months ago. He said, William, I know there are things that people have confided in you that you will never share. And we've heard how about your integrity in this area. People have told us that they shared things with you and no one has ever heard it being repeated or repeated. Because one, I think about what I had to endure and how talebearers spread things about me and the hurt and the pain and the misery and the suffering that it caused. And I never once want someone else to be exposed to that by my words. When we do so, or when we hold things close to the chest 
and keep it within our spirit and confidence and pray for that person. In essence, what we're saying to that person and to God on their behalf, that God, I want you to shield this person. I want you to protect this person. I want you to bless this person. And they will never be exposed to the enemy. They may have exposed frailties, weaknesses, various sins that they struggle with. They may have shared their shortcomings. They may have shared how they feel about others. But God, protect this person person until they have reached a point in you that they've come to maturity that now they can stand on their own and they could stand in healing and they could stand in strength and they could stand in love. Proverbs 20 and 19, he that go about as a tell bearer we break the reveal of secret, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his tongue. God has given us clear instructions. Separate, disconnect, cut off, get out of the company and the presence of a tailbearer. Walk away from them. Let them know enough is enough and no longer are you going to be in my life. Proverbs 20 and 19. And uh, 26, actually, and 22. The words of a tailbearer of wounds. The words of a tailbearer of wounds. It's not just wounds to the person that they're talking about, but they are slashing you with a spirit that should never have a part of your life. They're opening up wounds in you that you don't even know. They're causing pain in your heart, especially if you're sensitive for someone else that shouldn't be in your spirit at all. How many of you have heard people talk about others and your very soul was vexed? You felt pain. You felt anger. You felt sorry. You felt disappointment. And you've even asked, what do I do with this information? Why was I exposed to this? That's a wound that was inflicted upon you that never should have been inflicted in your life. The words of a tailbearer of wounds are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. They go deep. The Bible said, out of your belly should flow rivers a living water, not being hindered by gossip. It's like throwing stones into a very active well, which clogs it up, and it use, loses its youthfulness, usefulness. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shared, covered with silver draws. He that hateth dissimilar with lips and lay up deceit within him. These are all the things that the Bible talks about. It even talks about uh, in, in, in Titus, the second chapter and the third verse. The latter part of that says, or the first part, let me read the whole thing. Let me read the verse prior to that too. It said, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. We all should not be false accusers and be teachers of good things and not given to drunkenness, not given to those things that be a corrupt state. He, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, which we'll close out with, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the usefulness of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake 
have forgiven you. God is challenging us if we are involved in gossip to actually leave from it, abandon it. If we're not involved in gossip, this is to give you a shield of fortification so that when someone comes to you with the spirit of gossip, you'll hold up your hand and say, wait a minute, don't go there. Not today. I don't know your intent, but I know my intent. And my intent is to remain clean before the Lord. I don't need that filth. I don't need that garbage. Unless you're going to edify, unless you're going to pray and let us intercede, and unless we're going to bombard the heavens on behalf of our brothers and sisters, we're not going there. Not today. No disrespect. But I must protect my spirit before the living God. I must do those things that honor God the most. And I implore you to do the self same thing, my brother and my sister. You may not understand what you're causing, but let me share with you now that I'm knowledgeable through the word of the Lord, some scripture. Let me give you some detail. Let me break it down to you. Let me help you to live. And let me help you to be more successful. Let me show you how to shift your communications and change how you're communicating. Maybe you're disappointed on the inside. Maybe you're dealing with hurts and pains that you've not yet been healed from. Maybe this is a generational curse and that the devil wants you to think that this is your lot in life. But I'm here to tell you, You've been duped. You've been deceived. You've been bamboozled. You've been hoodwinked. Now it's time to open up the doors, open up your eyes, remove the blinders, and let us explore the truth together in the Lord. God wants you to change what you say out of your mouth. He wants you to have an enthusiasm and energy for the truth. He wants you to be a protector. He wants you to be a strong tower, a rock of fortification. He wants you to be an edifier and to build people up and not to use your tongue, that little member that can wreak havoc to change its methods and to change your heart. Let me pray with you, my brother, my sister. Let me help you through this. Let us pray together. Let us seek the Lord together. Let us fast together until the Lord God Almighty, the greater one, brings change in your spirit. I love you so much, my brother, my sister, that I don't want you to die, but I want you to live. You're not a snake. As a matter of fact, the Lord tells us that he will bruise our heel, but we will crush his heel. Head and together, let us be head crushers. Let us destroy the devil together. Let us stomp and dance on his head and rejoice forevermore in the Lord. We're going to speak only those things that honors God the most. So, tonight, if you're on the line, have still or contemplating, entertaining gossip or even being the facilitator of gossip. Let us go before the Lord and pray tonight that we can repent before him and present our hearts before him as holy and honorable before him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we come before you tonight realizing that many of us may have been involved in gossiping, whether today, in the past, some of us are hurt, damage, but God, you are the healer. We repent before you, O Most High. Forgive us. Wash us from that sin and all sins. God, we no longer wish to be on the side that we are hurting and wounding others, our brothers and our sisters who are the targets of our conversation, the subjects, those of whom we have spoken those words to. We didn't realize that we were hurting them and wounding them and filling them up with junk. 
But God, I ask for your forgiveness tonight. I stand before you bare. I stand before you honest. I don't stand before you deceptively, but I open my heart before you and ask you to cleanse it out. Change my mentality towards that. Help me to use the muscles and the memory and my life to deliver a different message. Let me be a healer. Let me be a repair of the breaches in the wall. Let me build and not tear down. Let me honor and edify and cause my brothers and sisters to grow, to flourish, and to become the vessels of honor that you would have them to be. God, heal me in my life so that I can be a blessing unto others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Also tonight, before we conclude on Facebook Live, we just want to make sure that there's anyone that is watching or listening that isn't saved, filled with the Spirit of the living God, and has a desire after tonight, for, after hearing the word of the Lord, they come to the conclusion I need Jesus. Lord, we present them unto you tonight. And we pray, and those that are willing to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, pray with me. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I am in need of your saving grace. Please don't condemn me with the unrighteous. Please don't Leave me to live a life in hell. You said, if I would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that if God raised him from the dead, and that if I confess my sins, and if I acknowledge you and repent, you would save me. And God, I need to be saved. Make me a child of your kingdom. Wash me with your blood. Fill me with your spirit. And give me an insatiable appetite for righteousness. Your word declares, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, we welcome you to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. This is your first step. There's many more that the Lord would have you to take. We pray that you will follow his life and his desire that he will lead you to a Bible believing ministry where you can learn the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and grow and become the man and woman of God that he desires for you to be. We thank the Lord for you and we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And now I turn it back over into the hands of Sister Gloria. God bless each and every one of you. And I pray that the word of the Lord has been a blessing unto you. God bless you. And we'll see you back here next week, the same time, right here. Amen. Again, God bless each and every one. Sister Gloria. Amen. This is Apostle William Whitfield. We are actually here with our five-minute segment in the Word. We're actually traveling this week, and we're just giving praise and thanks unto the Lord God Almighty for new opportunities. One of the things that I want to share with you this morning comes from Psalms 136 and verse 1, where it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. We always have to have a spirit of appreciation for the things that God is doing in our lives. 
whether those things we seemingly are enjoying and they're positive and we're loving them and we're just reaping the benefits of God's blessings. But also, when God deals us something else in our lives that is less than favorable or something comes into our lives, not necessarily by the will or the mind or the hand of God, but because we know in Scripture it says this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. We gravitate towards those things positively. We gravitate towards those things because we know that God has our best interests in mind. And because we know that God is concerned about us at every single stage and every single point of our lives, we appreciate and we approach him by giving thanks unto him. We give thanks unto him for he is definitely good, as the scriptures say. But the main thing is that his mercies endureth forever. Even in the book of Lamentation, it talks about how God's mercies are new every single morning from that third chapter there. We know that the man there goes through a lot, and he's talking about a lot of different things that has befallen him. But yet at the same time, he understands that the key to his relationship and walk with the Lord isn't based upon complaining. It's not based upon his outlook or his perspective. It's not based upon those who come and tell him about his horrific, terrible situation, as in the book of Job. But this is a man who has allowed his mind in his spirit and his soul to refocus. One of the things that someone told me years ago, and I'll never forget the statement, I will never forget where I was, I will never forget who said it to me, I will never forget the time of day that it was stated. But one of the things that they have said that to me that you have gone through a lot of horrific things in your life, but the thing that you have failed to do was to thank the Lord for that. Immediately, as soon as that person said it, my mind immediately went through multiple chains of thought. It went through the thought, why should I give thanks unto the Lord? But yet at the end of that thought process, it concluded that I needed to give thanks to the Lord. And immediately, the tears began to flow. I began to open up my mouth and I began to give thanks to the Lord for all the things he brought me out of, but all the things that he allowed me to experience, the pain, the agony, the difficulty, people telling lies, losing things, and all of that, you would say, why would you give thanks unto the Lord? Because when we learn to give thanks unto the Lord, not just for the good things in life, but we learn to give thanks to the Lord for even those horrible things that have gone in our lives, poor health, poor finances, bad decisions. Whenever we give thanks to the Lord, it changes our mindset. It changes our mindset to refocus on him that regardless of what we have gone through, he is always good. And listen to this, by giving thanks to the Lord in the midst of your circumstances, it actually causes the time that you spend in it to be lessened. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord because his mercy sustained you and kept you while you were going through. So regardless of what you're going through today, give thanks to the Lord because he is good. God bless you.
still coming to you in a different segment. This is our three-minute time in the Word. If you love what we're doing here, we're asking that you please post your likes, your comments, even subscribe to our channel. Also, share this with your family members and friends, especially if you know they could benefit from the word of the Lord. Amen. At Luke, the 18th chapter and verse 1, and Jesus is speaking a parable where he says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not faint. How many of you pass out during your trials or the circumstances that you're confronted with? You faint in a way to the point that you don't know what to do or how to handle it, and emotionally you are distraught. But here the Lord tells us, we dealt with several other topics before this, but he tells us that man ought to always pray and not faint. Listen, God hears it when you open up your mouth out of the sincerity of your heart, that you have purpose in your mind that you're going to seek him to gain understanding, to gain insight, and to help for him to help you to deal with the situation that you're confronted with. Listen, when you pray and you're sincere about your prayer, you will not act adversely. Prayer actually comes with a safety mechanism that allows you to back up and wait on the Lord. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good carriage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. When we're patiently waiting in prayer for an answer or for God to deliver us, we cease from employing our own methodology. We cease from employ, then from deploying our own ways of dealing with things. We cease from all of those things that we would get in God's way with, and we yield the right away to hear from heaven, to see the answer provided, and bring victory into every last one of our situations or circumstances. God always want his people to seek his face. Seek him through prayers, through petitions, through supplication. And even if you don't know how to pray, just like I'm talking to you right now, this is how you talk to God and give him the real deal. You don't have to give him the these and the dials and the, but all you have to do is give him what is sincerely and deeply embedded in your heart. Be open, be honest, and he will answer you. God bless you and we love you.